Bring in Congressman Steny Hoyer. He is the House Minority Whip who represents Maryland's 5th District. And uh, Leader Hoyer, thank you for joining us today. Good to be with you. The Washington Post and others lay out that this is the most amb ambitious blueprint that we've seen for paring back domestic spending and beefing up defense spending since Ronald Reagan first came in in 1981. What do you think? I think it's probably the most irresponsible budget that I've seen and most unrealistic budget that I've seen. And I doubt very seriously Surprise. whether the Republicans on the, the, the Appropriations Committee or the Authorizing Committee are going to think that it can be accomplished or should be accomplished. It cuts uh, uh, very substantially, as you pointed out, the State Department, which is going to undermine our security around the world. Uh, who says that? Uh, uh, the people at the Pentagon uh, say that. It cuts NIH uh, uh, very substantially. That's health care research to make America uh, more healthy. Uh, so that I think that uh, when you look at all the component parts, it was simply a hatchet job uh, to uh, increase very substantially the defense side of the budget uh, without paying for it, uh, and uh, except with these irrational cuts. So I don't really think this is a realistic document, uh, and it's not fleshed out, so we don't know all the specifics, but the fact is I th think that it will be essentially dead on arrival. We, we did hear earlier that even Scott Pruitt at the EPA had asked for additional spending for the EPA, uh, that he does not want to see the 31 percent budget cut that's been proposed. Similar stories from some of the other agencies. But this is also a, an administration that does not yet have all its players in place. So a lot of these things, admittedly, are going to be numbers that are not fleshed out at this point. Well, um, I don't think this is a question so much of having players in place as having a rational policy in place. Uh, I mean, this is just simply not a real document. Uh, it's not a responsible document, uh, and it's not rational to uh, slash domestic spending, particularly when you want to grow the economy. This is going to cost jobs uh, now and in the future. Congressman, uh, this is, yeah. how much of this is an, um, uh, might be described as an anchoring technique in terms of a larger negotiation? Well, it may be that. Uh, what, what you're saying is they don't expect to get this, but this right. is their starting point for exactly. negotiations. I get that. Uh, and, but uh, whether it's a starting point or not, you really ought to have a rational starting point, uh, not an irrational starting point. And I think this is the latter. And I think it's the latter because I think uh, Republicans uh, on the Appropriations Committee who have a responsibility uh, to ad ad adequately fund uh, programs that they think are important for, for America and for the American people, uh, you've already heard them saying that this is just simply not realistic. We can't do this. Uh, so uh, in terms of negotiations, they're not starting at a realistic point. Uh, so I think it will be viewed by many as uh, simply a non-starter. When Reagan came in and proposed some pretty steep cuts to government spending as well on the domestic side, uh, while those things started out, while we saw some cuts in, in programs, by the time he left, most of those programs had uh, grown to above when he started out with things. And, and they say well, that's in large part because of what happens in Congress, that nobody wants to see anything cut in their district or any of the projects that or plans that they really have an interest in themselves. Well, you know, I, I think that's a... That, that probably is correct in some instances, but uh, frankly, uh, spending has pretty, been pretty uh, well uh, contained uh, on, the, on the discretionary side. And frankly, it's not the discretionary part of the budgets that's growing, as right. you probably know. Right. The discretionary budget, as part of the uh, overall budget, has been substantially decreased over the last couple of decades. Uh, so uh, to look at and think you can take money out of NIH research, uh, take money out of protecting the environment, take money out of protecting the public health at CDC, uh, and, and you could go through uh, all these law enforcement, uh, transportation. Uh, the, the president says he wants to increase uh, infrastructure, but slashes the Department of Transportation. Uh, so it, it's a somewhat uh, hypocritical and contradictory budget in, in many respects. Uh, so that, uh, uh, frankly, you're correct. In fact, uh, President Reagan and any president, you know, the only ones who can really stop spending, I can talk about cutting spending, others can talk about cutting spending, but you need 218 in my house and you need uh, uh, 60 in the Senate, uh, but the president can stop spending in its tracks. No president in the 36 years uh, that I've served in the Congress of the United States has vetoed a, a bill that spent too much money and had that uh, bill uh, overridden, that habit, that veto overridden. Uh, and the debt went up uh, under Ronald Reagan 187 uh, percent, more than any other president with whom I've served. Is, is so this... the fact is that uh, it, it, they're looking in the wrong place. 
Uh, well, uh, is that an argument, get... though, for going after entitlements like Social Security and, and well, Medicare? I, th I think it's an argument for looking at the whole budget, not a third of the budget, or actually about 30 percent of the budget. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, without doing that, it's not going to be realistic because, uh, as I say, uh, forget about the Democrats. The Republican uh, leaders on the Appropriations Committee, so many of them have said either publicly or privately uh, that this is simply not realistic to meet Con the responsibilities. Congressman, uh, Secretary of Defense James Mattis said, if you cut the State Department's budget, then you need to buy me more bullets. Exactly. Um, what well, percentage that, that, of the State Department could you cut or could you not at all? Look, I think all of us want to get rid of waste, fraud, and abuse. We talk a lot about that. Uh, obviously, we ought to look in every one of the agencies uh, uh, on the defense side, on the non-defense side, uh, to make them uh, as efficient and effective as possible and not waste the taxpayers' money. I think all of us are very strongly for that. The question is, uh, do you want to cut out substance of, of uh, programs that are, in fact, helping America grow, helping America be healthy, helping America defend itself? Uh, I don't know the figure, uh, what the State Department you use, uh, uh, ask me that. I don't know what percentage it is, but uh, we ought to look at all the agencies to make them efficient and not waste money. But uh, cutting the Defense Department uh, by 15, 16, 17, uh, 18 percent uh, is simply, uh, as uh, General Mattis points out, Secretary Mattis points out, going to undermine our national uh, security right. while you're in increasing the Pentagon. And his point was, look, you, if, you, if you cut the State Department, you're going to have to spend a lot more money on defense because right. we're going to be less secure. That, that, that's a fair point. But back to this idea of the entitlements. I, yeah. I mean, if, if, if you really want to get your arms around deficit spending, you have to go after things like Social Security, Medicare, and, and Medicaid potentially, too. Do you think it's Becky, the right attack to say that Medicaid should be frozen at 2018 levels? Yeah, Becky, what I, what I said was, and I, what I believe, is you have to look at the entire budget. Uh, if you look only at discretionary spending, and I mean defense and non-defense, you're looking at 30 percent of the budget. Uh, sure. Means 70 percent of the budget no, I, it, And this goes untouched. back to Simpson-Bowles. This is the argument that Simpson-Bowles made in every one of these. I, I, I get that. It's just that when yeah. people say it's the way that looking at the broader budget, it seems that we never get around to doing just that. If, well, if, the if, in the United things States, that you'd be okay with doing. Becky, as you know, the president said absolutely he was not going to touch Social Security or Medicare. I know. Uh, we don't think, uh, I, I don't think that we ought to touch the, the benefits of anybody who has Social Security and Medicare at this point in time. But we have to look at 100 percent of our expenditures. Now, there's some expenditures you can't look, you can't modify. Uh, obviously, the interest on the national debt is something that you can't modify. No, so, and that's going to uh, get harder as, as the Fed uh, continues it, to raise interest rates. Becky, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that's why I think this budget is so uh, irresponsible and reckless uh, and will be rejected uh, pretty much out of hand because it won't be perceived as a realistic effort. Uh, but uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, the president uh, d has not outlined exactly where he thinks these cuts ought to go, or mm. Mr. Mulvaney of OMB. Uh, it's a broad stroke, uh, but the broad stroke, uh, I think, mm. gives reason for great concern. Now, you know, I, I was coming on this morning because we we're having a hearing uh, uh, today, uh, a hearing that the Republicans would not hold on what the impacts are in the repeal of the Affordable Care Act. And I think it's very important uh, that we have some hearing. Uh, the uh, Republicans uh, marked up in Ways and Means Committee, marked up in Energy and Commerce. No American had the opportunity to be a witness. Uh, we didn't have a CBO score, a Congressional Budget Office. We didn't know what it would cost. We now know what it would cost. And at this hearing that we're going to have uh, today, uh, Doug Elmendorf, uh, the democratically appointed former uh, ch uh, chairman of the uh, CBO is going to agree with the Republican appointed CBO director that this will gut Medicaid, cut Medicare very substantially, <coughs> increase costs for almost everybody in America and not 24 million people uh, out of insurance and end up with uh, 58 million people uninsured pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, that's a, a, also an irresponsible policy. And I hope uh, Americans would. <laughs> Uh, look in. I'm not sure we're going to have all the television cameras yep. there, but we are going to be uh, uh, right. streaming it on my Facebook page, and we're also going to be streaming it uh, on uh, uh, resistrepeal.org. Yep. So we hope the public will, will watch and find out what this proposal 
uh, does. It's not a better way. It's a, it's a terrible way. I want the old Steny Hoyer back there, but he's in a good mood. I mean, it, it's been tough since the November 8th, and you're the loyal opposition, and, and you're, you know, your party's in disarray. And Steny, it's only going to get worse tonight. No, 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 no. My party's not in disarray. It's only going to get worse tonight with Marilyn Xavier. It's only going to get worse for you. I, thank God you're not coming on tomorrow, because you're going to... Uh, Look, I wasn't too happy at the, at the Big Ten <laughs> conference, as I you know. You. Are you going to watch tonight? I'm, ex I'm excited. I'm worried. I'm worried because uh, Maryland uh, has great players. I, I, I but we have great funny. players, but we're not playing really well those no. last month. Xavier lost with lost that great player that, uh, that uh, to an eight torn ACL. Yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't take. I hope we don't take them for granted. It's going to be a, it's going to be a tough take game. Take them for granted. You're not even. You may be a lower seed, but on ESPN, I thought 58 percent yeah. chance that Xavier wins. Yeah. Then they, you're even uh, you're even distorting that number. I mean, God <laughs> Almighty. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Still no Steny Hoyer statue at Maryland either. Boomer Esiason, beautiful. But no Steny Hoyer. No Give him Steny time. Hoyer. Give him time. No Steny. All right. Thanks. Always uh, good to be with you. Good to be with you. <laughs> Up next, uh, shares of PayPal dipping after news that Google.